Hello everyone, this is Mr. Elrod from Atlanta, Georgia, and today we are going to be looking over a review for a few basic uh, concepts that are important to human geography and the analysis of space and the way that people interact with their space. Those two are GIS, or Geographic Information Systems, and GPS, or Global Positioning Systems. Now the reason we're going over this today is because I often have students tell me uh, that they have a hard time distinguishing between the two and when they might be used. So basically what we're going to do is we're just going to go over uh, the idea of them, what they are, give them a definition, then we're going to look at a couple of examples and see if you can determine which of these two would be used in the specific examples uh, illustrated. So uh, first let's go over what exactly GIS and GPS are. First we have GPS. Uh, basically all GPS is is it is uh, when we use satellites that are orbiting the Earth in order to, pin uh, to pinpoint, triangulate, and pinpoint an exact location on the Earth's surface. Uh, and these are going to be described in lines of latitude and longitude. So you'll always see the GPS coordinates using lines of latitude and longitude. And we, we use GPS in our everyday lives, and it's uh, especially with our technology that we have. And um, while we may be using a phone that uses GPS, the phone itself, or even our navigator in our car, it's not actually a GPS itself. It's a way to display uh, GPS and locations and how to get from one location to another using a uh, system and, and logarithms um, or algorithms that are going to take you from one point to another. So the GPS is actually being illustrated on the map. And so uh, it itself is not GPS. So the GPS is really just the point on the Earth's surface. Uh, so that is what that is GPS or Global Positioning System. GIS, on the other hand, is really a data, data storage system uh, where we can input information data, any type of numerical data into a system and then use that in order to display the data on a map to get a geographic sense of how the data relates to the space that is in that it is in. Okay, and so uh, GIS is more of a data storage system uh, and then again that data is pulled and then displayed on the map in any number of ways and so this is a lot of times where we get our thematic maps from whether it's a dot density map or a proportional symbol map a choropleth map um, but it's using the data stored in the GIS and again the GIS a lot of times is used to understand and analyze space in the way that people interact with their space so now we're going to look at a couple of things just to illustrate our point uh, so first of all, again, this is not, uh, the TomTom -tom that you see on the screen there is not a GPS. It's using GPS positions to give you directions from point A to point B on a map, and it'll help direct you and guide you, but it itself is not a GPS. It uses GPS, but it itself is not a GPS, a global positioning system. Uh, and the next we have is, is just the illustration of the GIS, the Geographic Information System. A lot of times they talk about how the information is stored in layers, and so the independent layers exist in a database and then can be either displayed separately or together on the map. Again, the purpose is to help you understand the relationship between the different layers. So uh, in this illustration we have, uh, you have the street data and then the buildings data and they're separate. Um, so we don't see a relationship here between houses and streets, but if we laid them on top of each other we would. And the vegetation data also, and then you see on the very bottom we bring all of those three things together. So we can see how the buildings and the streets uh, interact with the natural landscape or the vegetation. And again, we can do this really for any number of things, whether it's the physical landscape or we can look at the people on the landscape, how many people are living there. And we can do it with animals. We can do it with number of deaths or number of births. We can do it with, uh, you know, we can do it with number of buildings and types of businesses. So anyway, really the possibilities for GIS are endless just depending on what kind of data you can collect for the landscape. So let's look at five statements and see if you can determine uh, which we would use for each situation. Now what I would encourage you to do is after you see the statement, pause the video for a second, see if you can determine whether or not we would use GPS or GIS for that situation, and then see if you can uh, determine for yourself why, what is it about the statement that uh, would cause you to think that that would be, we would use uh, GIS or GPS. So our first statement says, I would use this for geocaching. And the answer for that is GPS, or Global Positioning System. Now, if you weren't familiar with geocaching, basically that's just a game that's, um, or an activity that people participate in that's really take, uh, taken off here in the last 10 or so years, where you use a GPS device, a locator, 
to locate specific uh, positions where somebody has hidden an item or an object. You can go on the internet, Google geocaching, and you can see people participating in these things, and they find things and they leave things, and you know it's all about the the thrill of the hunt, really. Uh, so I had my brothers uh, participate in geocaching. Um, so you you would use your ability to find the location or to find the object that they were hiding. Uh, so that would be GPS. Our next statement says, I would use this to find the locations of all McDonald's in my area. And so once again, the answer to that is a GPS. So each McDonald's has a specific GPS, um, not a GPS, but it has an exact set of coordinates for where it's at on the Earth. So you could use GPS to pinpoint the exact locations of McDonald's. You know, if you are a McDonald's fanatic and you have to have a Big Mac, you always need to know where the nearest Big Mac is. Uh, you could do that, and then you could display that on the map itself. Now, you might have been thinking GIS because we're looking at the McDonald's, but again, the, the key term there is the location of the McDonald's. Okay, our next statement says, I would use this to analyze the spatial distribution of McDonald's around the world. In case you're a world traveler and you just have to have a Big Mac or a McDonald's, uh, French fries, whatever, whichever country you're in, the answer to this is GIS. Again, what we've done is we would have stored the information of the location of all the McDonald's, and we're analyzing the location of the McDonald's across the world. So we're analyzing the space. Where are the McDonald's located? Um, so we want to we want to see where are they located, and maybe that might lead us to further inquiry about why are they located in some areas and not in other areas. Uh, you know, we want to know something about McDonald's and their reach in terms of culture or whatever. Anyway, so again, the key term there is uh, to analyze the location across uh, space. Next statement says, uh, I would use this to create a choropleth map of population density in Forsyth County. Again, the answer to this is GIS because what I've done is I've taken the data of the population of the county and I'm going to display it on the map. And so, you know, maybe I want to compare it within the county the county versus counties that surround it and so we're using the choropleth map so the shading so depending on uh, what the color is that would display a specific uh, set of information to me uh, so I'm using GIS for that our last statement says I would use this to compare the change in population in Georgia and California from the last census Again, the answer to that is GIS, and we could, you know, use a number of thematic maps here, but the idea is we are comparing population change, so we have the date of population change uh, in California and Georgia, and we want to compare those two from the last census. And again, that would lead us to further questioning, you know, if California was, had showed negative growth where uh, Georgia showed positive growth, we want to know, well, why is that? And we think about general population uh, movement trends in the United States towards the south and away from the extreme west and things like that so uh, it would help us to to understand that understand maybe not the relation between Georgia and California but what's happening in those different parts of the, of the country and then lead us to further questioning but again uh, we store the data of the population change we display it on the map uh, to analyze the space and so that would be GIS Last thing I have here is some bibliographic information for the illustration that we use for GIS. Uh, please leave a comment at the bottom of the video. Let me know if you found this to be helpful. Uh, based upon your comments, I will either make more videos or, ch or change the direction of, uh, of what I'm doing with the reviews. But I hope you find this helpful, and good luck studying for your test.